Yes. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor, and this is another episode of Virtual Tea Time with Amy. And today <laughs> we have two special guests. So we have Jeff Page, and I'm going to let him introduce the next guest. But um, Jeff and I know each other through the British American Chamber of Commerce, and I'll just start it off with that. Jeff, would you like to take it away? <laughs> hey, Amy, thanks for having us today. Um, my name is Jeff Page. I own a cruise planners franchise here in um, Central Florida. We do all travel from A to Z, not just cruises, um, but we are available for any travel pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, I basically like to say if you're leaving home for travel, um, we can help. For entertainment almost, we can help. Um, my guest is, and somebody that's special to me is Joanne Cotterman with Royal Caribbean. She's a strategic account manager with Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. And she's going to talk to us a little today about Mariner of the Seas and Coco Cay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amy. And thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm really excited to be talking about one of our, one of my most favorite ships here in Port Canaveral. And I just have to say, I've been working with Jeff now, oh gosh, Jeff, for a number of years. Is it five Probably years? years. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, awesome. So we've um, really developed a great friendship and relationship. So I am the strategic account manager for Royal Caribbean. I actually live right here in Satellite Beach, Florida. So um, very close to the to working um, in the Central Florida area with Jeff. And um, speaking of Central Florida and, and really close to uh, my heart is the Mariner of the Sea sailing here right out of uh, Port Canaveral. She, as you can see her in my background uh, photo, she's a beautiful ship. She has a lot of things to offer. She went through a hundred and $25 million refurbishment before wow. before we brought her up to Port Canaveral to do her three and four night sailings for us. So honestly, I, if you've been on some of these, uh, the larger ships in our fleet, such as Oasis class, um, minus Central Park and Boardwalk, I really feel like this ship has just as many things to offer as far as amenities. And as you can see, we've added Flow Rider, uh, the Flow Rider apparatus right behind me. We've got the uh, Perfect Storm slide um, and that beautiful bright colored ball that you also see right behind me, right above my head, is um, the sky pad, which is a virtual reality trampoline um, event. So you oh actually God. bungee yourself into the, um, you're, you're, you harness yourself into the um, these bungee cords and then you jump on the tr trampoline, but you're wearing a virtual goggle that has six to eight different games that you choose from. And as you're moving on the trampoline, you're actually, the game is actually interacting with you. So um, all of these features that you see right behind me and you also see the rock wall um, over to my my left is the uh, is all complimentary. So that's a beautiful thing about the activities that we offer on board the ship. Um, some of the other new things that we've introduced on the Mariner um, and is really one of my favorites is the Playmakers, which is right on the Royal Promenade, um, which is perfect for your Royal Tea Time. Um, we've got Playmakers, which is a uh, sports bar. It's got about 50 plus TV screens in there. Um, and there's a video arcade that's a part of that as well. So a lot of family um, um, activity can take place. Your, the kids can have fun with the video games while you're having one of your favorite cocktails. Uh, on board the ship we also have, and I want to be sure I say it right, it's one of our English pubs um, that we that we have right there on the Royal Promenade, and it's called the um, the Wig and the Gravel. So oh, I love uh, it. That, that could be uh, where I can see you having some of some fun with your group as well, uh, drinking tea or maybe some of the English beers um, right. that are offered through there. So um, the ship is just an amazing. Um, destination within itself. There's so much to do and explore. Um, even with the ice skating rink, with our ice shows are amazing, our production shows. Um, oh. We've got, of course, a full uh, casino on board for those that like to uh, have some entertainment. And then with our culinary side, we also have some specialty restaurants in addition to your traditional dining. Mm -hmm. So we Amy's Italian restaurant. <laughs> We've got Azumi's Hibachi um, and Sushi. And there's a Chops Grill Steakhouse. Um, Johnny Rockets and some other complimentary. Well, those are actually specialty restaurants, but we also have some other um, complimentary venues throughout the ship too, like the Windjammer, uh, the mm -hmm. Spa, the Vitality area has some um, uh, complimentary healthy choices as well for guests to choose from. So 
um, Chef, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything as far as the ship is. Well, I have a quick question. Because <laughs> you mentioned a skating rink. Is that for uh, the crew, like the people on the ship get to skate, or is it just for a show to watch? Well, we actually have both. So the ice skating rink is an entertaining an amazing show that we have. These performers are Olympic performing skaters. That's um, awesome. At any given point, you might see about 12 to 14 ice skaters on the rink and it's real ice. Um, if you sit close enough, you'll actually get ice that will fly up and hit you in your cheeks. That's awesome. Um, and then at, on sea days, we also do um, provide ice skating, complimentary. We, we provide the skates. So the guests can actually have some fun ice skating as well. We also use that venue for a, um, they call it the laser, the glow in the dark laser tag activity. Mm -hmm. So again, complimentary. And it's really a great way for maybe family, friends, um, businesses to get together. We have these big, huge apparatuses that we blow up. Um, of course, the <laughs> ice is covered with a wood floor. Right. <laughs> um, we put these apparatuses up and then we've got the laser guns, you know, the, the glow in the dark laser guns that... Um, mm -hmm guests can have some fun with so really it's really been a home run for us the guests i'm really that have participated in it really love it that is super cool i'm a bit of a figure skater so that's why i got pretty excited ah. i was like wait i can bring my skates leave your skates at home um we do provide the skates for you so um okay. we're 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 really protective about the you know the different equipment that's used on this on oh the really ice skating okay rink. But, um, okay. so we have, we have to, um, we have to provide the skates for you, but okay. they are complimentary. So, okay. Um, and then it's less for you to have to pack. So right. definitely okay. you can, you can plan on ice skating at the middle of the high sea in the Caribbean. Yeah, I know. That's really cool. Yeah, middle of February, the beginning of February. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. 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 It's a lot of fun. They actually awesome. have a couple other programs where you can do behind the scene um, all access tours, which uh, mm -hmm. there is a cost to that, but it's like a three hour tour and they actually take you to through like the, some of the galley tours or on the bridge or the engine room viewing. Um, oh, okay. But the, my favorite part of that all access tour is actually going through the entertainment venues and meeting mm -hmm. the crew and staff um, of the production shows and ice skating, that um, sounds you cool. know, the performers. So, yeah. Yeah. So Jeff, should I Beautiful. should I move into perfect day? I just put the picture up. So, I saw uh, that. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't a hint, but yeah. I figured we were going to get there eventually, and I thought I was. Yeah. Well, I ready. just um, checked my notes. I I mean, I don't believe I missed any. I mean, there are so much more I could uh, talk about. We could spend a whole I just hour talking to add, about like, the ship itself. I just wanted to add, like the specialty restaurants Joanne mentioned. One, they're all great, and two. <laughs> Um, Johnny Rockets is like less than ten dollars to, to go, um, mm -hmm. and the other ones, especially restaurants, are typically somewhere between twenty-five and thirty dollars per person. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Charge. So they're still very, very reasonable for for what you get. Um, so they say specialty restaurant. I know that word scares a lot of people, <laughs> um, but it, it's very reasonable to do, and I do it on every time I cruise. So um, okay. just something to add in. So Coca K or a perfect day at Coca K is the next thing we want to talk about a little bit. And it's awesome. I've been there. Joanne's been there. She she got to do all the slides. I, I did not the day we were there, but uh, so Joanne can talk about the slides and the thrill side. Yeah. Um, so perfect day Coco K is truly it does deliver a perfect day. And it's it's for whatever you want to do. So the ship actually um, docks right at the, the pier and it's a short walk right into the entrance. However, we do have shuttle service available if anybody needed the extra assistance, um, but short walk right into the entrance of the perfect day Coco K. So it's divided in two different parts. And I think it's, it's, it's easier to just look at it as you've got your thrill side, which is the water park. Um, the water park does have a day pass admission. Um, and it does vary seasonality. So, it, you know, the day, the pricing can change from anywhere from $50 per, per person for the full day access um, on up. Um, and then we have the chill side of the park, uh, which is your typical beach day. If you want to grab a hammock or a lounge chair and hang out at the beach, or maybe you want to guide yourself to the, uh, the center of the island, uh, we have this amazing freshwater 
Oasis Lagoon pool. Uh, lots of umbrellas, lots of lounge chairs. Uh, the pool itself has water loungers that are outlined. All of that's complimentary. We have some amazing food venues over there. Um, all of our food is cooked uh, fresh, which is really great. We built the galleys right into all of the food venues. So no longer are we tendering the food over early in the morning and throwing it on the grill. Very fresh right there on the island. Um, in addition to the um, to the Skipper's Grill and to the Chill Grill, which is the out island um, buffet uh, option, we have these snack shops that are set up throughout the island as well. And they offer um, to made uh, made to order burgers, chicken sandwiches, onion rings, French fries, funnel cakes, brownie, caramel desserts. Um, and those, we've got actually one located right in the chill park or in the, um, the water park. And right behind Jeff, you see that big, tall, beautiful, bright apparatus. That is the Daredevil's Tower. It is 135 feet high. It consists of somewhere, I think it's eight different slides. No, um, uh -uh. no thanks. <laughs> it is the tallest water slide in North America. Oh my gosh. Um, the slide, you do have to walk all the way up to the top every um, to get, you know, to, to get uh, to the top to take mm -hmm. the ride down, which I believe runs about 60 minutes then in duration, but it is a thrill uh, oh seeker goodness. for sure. Um, inside the park, the water park, we also have um, the slings shot slide which is uh, a wrap type slide that you actually have four people that can sit in it and the more weight the mm -hmm. more you sling off the slingshot so oh, you wow. actually are airborne and i think i probably went down that slide seven to eight times myself it is just so much fun we have a wave pool there we also have the adventure ocean that has all these obstacles that you can challenge yourself with as well inside mm -hmm. um, the water park but Plenty to do if you didn't want to participate. You can see right behind Jeff again is the beautiful Oasis pool, uh, fresh water pool that most people navigate. They, we find they'll navigate themselves to that pool, which is kind of right in the center. Um, easy to find. It's um, There's pavers throughout the islands to take you to the various parts of the island, but um, and, and plenty of signage. Um, but most people kind of make their self at home there and then go off and explore the island, um, which is very easy to navigate. But there is shuttle service that will run you around the, you know, the outline of the island as well, if you just wanna take a ride and explore it that way. And um, one of our newest um, features, our phases that we just rolled out is the Cocoa Beach Club. So our Cocoa Beach Club is a private, um, exclusive kind of a luxury uh, experience for the day. So it does have an entry fee, a day pass um, that you would need to um, purchase through the pre-cruise planner. And then um, that has an infinity pool that's built facing out over the ocean. The infinity mm -hmm. pool is something like 2,600 square feet, um, a beautiful oh, wow. clubhouse with luxury seating. Our lunch there is an upscale mm -hmm. lunch. So you'll find that we have uh, filet mignon, we oh. have fresh grouper, very, very nice uh, lunch choices there on the menu. Um, if you want to have a experience with one of our cabanas uh, that we have on the island, I think we have eight different types of cabanas um, throughout the island. Uh, in the Cocoa Beach Club, we actually have two different cabanas. One is a floating cabana. We had a team of folks that went all the way to Bora Bora to study the floating cabanas there and bring that kind of that structure oh, wow. that back to, to um, perfect day. And those cabanas actually hold up to six to eight guests. So you pay a one-time fee. It does come with the cabana attendant that will bring you fresh bottled water. Mm. They'll bring you lunch. If you purchase the drink package uh, from the ship, it does transfer over to the island as well, um, unlimited drink package. Or if you want to do the, you know, drink a la carte, you can do that too. So there's a lot of um, lot of choices over at Perfect Day. Uh, so, however you want to make it your perfect day, it's it's got a lot of lot of options and a lot of choices. Um, what did yes. I miss, Jeff? Well, can I? Um, ask? We didn't talk much about the chill side, but the chill side is is like similar to any other private island, but it has three three or four beaches, um, lots of area um, beachfront. You can swim in the ocean. You can snorkel right off the shore. 
um, and that's all included. So you can you have your choice, and that's why the thrill and the chill, the, mm-hmm. the thrill side is is a up upsell or, or or a charge for it, and the, the chill side is just like any of other cruise lines, private island. There's more to do than you can imagine on the one side. You don't need to. to you don't have to do the ch- the thrill side to enjoy right. the island at all. Yeah, and that's a misconception for a lot of people that they that they fear that there is a fee just to go to Perfect Day, and there mm-hmm. isn't. You can certainly go to. Oh. Yep, I think for the, the different oh, yeah. lunch options <laughs> that they have. Um, in addition to the water part, the th- the the thrill part, there is also a helium balloon that goes up I I saw 400 that. <laughs> feet and it's absolutely beautiful. It's about a 15 to 20 minute duration experience and that does have a, a cost to it, a separate cost. But you see this beautiful water, you get the, you can see stingray and the fish swimming in this beautiful crystal mm-hmm. clear water when you're all the way up there. Uh, we also have a zip line. I think the zip line runs about 1600 feet around the island. And at the very end, the last run um, if you time it just right, there is a um, a fountain that shoots out. So if you <laughs> if you time it right, you might be you might be zipping right over. Yeah. Over the fountain. Yeah. That's fun. Over the fountain um, as well. But you can see behind Jeff too. We've got the day beds that are available over on South Beach. Um, it's a it's just it's a beautiful day there. Perfect. Yeah, you, and you can do as much or as little as you want. That's Linda and I on the island I see. at the pool. So we had I don't know if you noticed the picture of the pool. Um, there were probably a thousand people in that pool that day, and you saw it didn't look crowded at all. No, it didn't. So there's yeah, plenty so, of yeah. The island that's a good point. The island was actually built to accommodate up to ten thousand guests at any given point. Wow. Um, we're rolling out other phases. We're going to be expanding on that, but there's plenty, plenty of space to uh, navigate around and enjoy uh, any part of the island and not feel crowded at all. Yeah. yeah. So, and there's the hot air balloon behind me. Um, and that's that's just like the one at Downtown Disney, so mm-hmm. except mm-hmm. for you can see the island and the fish swimming in the water right. and and everything around the island. So um, it's a whole lot better view than Downtown Disney. Right. It's, uh, <laughs> but it functions the same. But it functions the same. <laughs> it's the same type of uh, thing. So so mm-hmm. those in Central Florida, most of them have probably seen it already or something similar. That's cool. So I wanted to say I've never actually been on a cruise, so all this stuff is new to me. So it's a private island just as Royal Caribbean's? Yes. Like okay. So they created this, is, this whole thing. <laughs> and it just yeah. opened in November. They just um did all this work last year. Wow. So oh, okay. Super cool. Year. So um it's Yeah, I uh, think the investment was something like three hundred and fifty million dollars into wow. developing uh perfect day Coco case. So we had for those that may are uh, had cruise prior to a private out island, which was called Coco Cay, um, been transformed. Um, there are parts of the island um, over on Chill Beach that is, is still somewhat of that old, um, not old, the original um, look and feel of what Coco Cay used to offer. Mm-hmm. But we, as you can see, it is um, much, it's much a more. Whole, whole different world. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It looks amazing. And is your is your is your cruise doing a one stop or two? What we've got two, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got yeah. yeah we got two days there. So so we, we're we're kind of excited about it. So mm-hmm. um, Joanne, it's almost five o'clock. Yeah, so. I have to jump. So yeah, it's thank been you a true so much for your time, Joanne. Please invite me while. back. I'd love yeah, to talk absolutely. more. I'm sure that I could find more to say. Um, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. it's been a true pleasure to be, to, to be here on the call with you today. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank great you job. so thank much. Thank you, Joanne. Appreciate your time. Thank okay, you. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> so and then there were two. <laughs> a little more excited now. It's just the two of us. Yeah, super yeah. cool. Yeah, I was like, I had no idea that's what Coco K was. Like when you said Coco K and like NASA, I'm like, Okay, like just two stops. I didn't know Coco K was like this thing that they created. <laughs> yeah, no, Coco K is awesome, and that's that's really why I wanted Joanne to come on and talk about it and and um, see. So I guess we should tell people what why we're talking about Royal Caribbean right. and then right. uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and um, well, and side note, I totally forgot. We usually start off with what tea we're drinking. So uh, I'm actually uh, not at my home at this moment. So I had my. Uh, emergency twinings tea bags in my purse. <laughs> so I'm doing Earl Grey. 
Uh-huh. Uh, what do you, what I can't do you pronounce have? it, but this is what I'm drinking. Oh, it's like disappearing in your background. I know, it's getting lost. <laughs> coffee? Co yeah, you? it's coffee. Oh, Pure? the Pura Pura? Yeah, yeah. Pura. I I think it's called, pronounced Pura. Yeah, I actually haven't had that, but I know that's a type of uh, like tea. So how is it? It's good. I like it. Uh, it's my favorite. All right, awesome. That's why it's always in the house. So um, yeah, Linda loves it. Nice. So, um, do you want to do you want to show off your teacup? I do. So <laughs> Linda made me bring a teacup. I love it. Teacup. So. So see, we've got our official teacups. All right. Now that everyone I guess watching. This is a cheers with a teacup too. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> we can say cheers. Cheers. Now that everyone who's watching is, uh, you know, in the proper cruise beach mood um, and tea mood, <laughs> now we can say why we're talking about all this well, do you want to start do you want me to start uh, i think you should start because i was right. kind of like yeah you were the the ringleader so, <laughs> as, as amy said uh, earlier we met each other through the british american chamber of commerce and um a couple months ago we started talking about maybe we should do a high tea at sea so um we kind of developed the idea and today we want to announce and kind of get the feeling if we're too early going out or what people's thoughts are um starting to schedule a high tea at sea so currently we have a high tea at sea surprise surprise on the mariner of sea um, <laughs> the ship it, we've been talking about <laughs> and it's going to go to um, coco k twice so it's two different days at coco k and it's at nasa um, so the plan at this point is um, first day is at Coco K. We're, we're going to do the beach and come back to a high tea. So um, we'll be back leaving the, the uh, Coco K a little bit early, but, but high tea will be at 430. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives people time to plan their day. And if they get out early, they can get back. That's plenty of six hours, seven hours is plenty of time to spend on a beach anyway. Right. Um, come back and do high tea and then pretty much free for dinner or we can do some impromptu plans, but that's mm -hmm. kind of that day. Um, NASA, we're talking about possibly doing a walking tour. Um, and that walking tour may or may not include high tea at this point. We haven't gotten details yet. Um, with the travel industry pretty much being shut down, um, there's nobody to <laughs> out to. <laughs> to, to. Right. <laughs> to uh, lock those details in right now so um, that's yet to be determined what that will turn into but um, that's the current plan is a walking tour that goes through restaurants um, a local hotel um, the parliament house um, does does some some stops and we're hoping to be able to add a high tea and in, in or, or at least a tea a stop at a tea house that's on the island right. Mm -hmm. um, so that day we'll come back to the ship and enjoy the ship and then back then we go back to Coco Cay. Um, so Coco Cay second day again, do what you want on the island. Um, we can always pick a spot to meet or people can do their own thing. Um, and then back to the ship at 430 for a cocktail hour. So I can pretty yeah. much explain a cocktail hour. It's um, an hour for drinks. <laughs> right. <laughs> And we were talking about maybe doing some British trivia, like doing some fun activities during that. So, so brush up on your, your British history and your tea history. Right. And then right. test you with some trivia. Um, right. So Learn your royals. <laughs> Learn your royals. And, you know, and, and I guess we have to know if, if uh, know, know a little more than I know right now. So. <laughs> maybe I'll That's just... Good. I'll be the video. Yeah, you'll just watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll be okay. But, uh, I love it. But anyway, um, it's going to be a, a fun day. So it's a four-day cruise leaving from Port Canaveral. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to start roughly $800 a person, and that depends on what we end up doing for um, for uh, the, the day on NASA. That's what's going to drive the price difference. Um, so that's rough, rough guess of where we're going to end up and uh, again i can't get pricing until they open open things back up the, the companies that i work with for tours are all shut down and um uh, just just doing refunds at this point they're not right. making the travel so um so that's kind of where we're at it's exciting right. um what i like about the mariner of the sea is most of the time your three and four day ships um are kind of the old tired ships that are ready to um be retired Mm -hmm. um royal caribbean a couple of years ago decided no we're going to take one of our mid-sized ships and put the the um amenities of the big ships on it 
and use that as a three or four day trip. Right. So it's just as special as the bigger cruises, but on a smaller ship on a three on a three or four day itinerary. So um, really a great combination of a short cruise and an introductory to cruising. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's your thoughts, Amy? What do you? I think. Questions? Well, first of all, I think that's a really good point or distinction you made because again, I don't know cruise stuff, but people who are watching that might know cruise things that would you know might say oh well that's not as nice a ship if it's a shorter cruise i'm glad that you pointed out actually <laughs> it is a nice ship for the shorter cruise um but i think i don't know if we mentioned it for anyone who's worried about the state of the way things are this is for february of next year so there is time people <laughs> yeah, <so we laughs> there's time for us to get to the, week. <laughs> yeah yeah so there's time for <laughs> like you know i think by then we're going to be ready to like leave <laughs> to get, yeah. get out into the ocean. So, so the date, I did not mention the date. The date is February 8th. Um, and you know, I was a professional chef in my prior life. I worked for Disney for over 20 years. And <laughs> the cruise lines um, really kind of have already been dealing with norovirus for a long time. So virus control is not new to them. You will see new stuff put in place when they come back in the water, um, but but virus control and and sanitation processes are strict. Um, cruise lines are are actually monitored by the FDA and not the local health department, and so they have stricter guidelines to start with. And oh. they've been dealing with norovirus forever, so um, I have a hundred percent confidence that the cruise lines are going to be safe right. when, oh, when they awesome. come back up. That's good to know. Yeah, I didn't know that either. <laughs> you're the expert <laughs> that's awesome so we're yes yeah, so we're kind of like announcing this everyone who is watching if you want to or whenever you watch this if you want to comment let us know what you're thinking about this idea because we you know wanted to throw it out there because we're excited about it but we started planning this before any of this you know stay at home coronavirus stuff was happening <laughs> So. Yeah, this is this is one of these. Um, I guess we started talking maybe three months ago. We started mm -hmm. talking about this, and then right. coronavirus came, and we put it on hold for a while. But right. um, I, I honestly think people are getting to a point that they want to start thinking about travel and want to start thinking about what's next and have something to look right. forward to. So I'm hoping the timing is right, and we don't offend anybody by saying let's go on a cruise today. <laughs> right. but, um, <laughs> If we do, it's not intentional. Right, right. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> I, I was complaining about the city of Altamont yesterday in my video because they closed down Crane's Roost. So I'm already probably offending people. Yeah. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> there you go. But, but yeah. as Amy said, we'd love to hear your thoughts, comments, um, your level of interest on this. Should we postpone it? Right. Um, we'd like to hear your opinion, positive, negative, um, because it helps us move forward through this thing. Right. And for if no, if you don't quite understand, like it's going to be like a group of us on the ship. So it's like Amy's high tea at sea. Right. And it's just like whoever's interested, we, we will have our own special group that does these special things that everyone else on the ship is not doing. <laughs> yeah. So right now I have um, 20 cabins on hold. So that would be up to 40 people. It could be a little okay. bit more than that, but typically a cabin is considered two people in a group. Okay. Um, so we have 20 cabins on hold. Um, we can add more, I'm sure. Um, we can take some away if we need to, but that's what we have on hold. So it could be a group of you know, 40, 50, 60 people if we sell it all. Right. Um, so we'd that love to have people join us. That would um, be so fun. You know us or not, if you're interested in right. the <laughs> we'd love to meet you on the ship so absolutely um, yeah. yeah that would be super fun so um i don't know do we have anything else we would want to share about it before i start asking you random questions <laughs> um so right now we have um balconies ocean views and um and uh, inside cabins reserved um okay. the price includes um, I, I twice a year get to do what's called come sail away with me. It's a perk that I get that I can get a few extra things. So the price price that we've quoted includes um, drink or not drinks. It includes your, your gratuities, which are usually about $15 a day per person. It includes um, a, spe a meal in the specialty restaurant for lunch one day. You get a coupon book. Um, so we get some perks built in. 
Um, you know, we'll get the cocktail party at no charge. So that's, that's built in. Um, so there's a lot of perks that you can't get built into the price. Plus you get Amy and her expertise. So, um, mm -hmm. so, um, there's, there's tons of things built in, um, for, for it that are above and beyond. And only the people in, in the group would be able to, uh, to do that. Um, and if you book direct on your own, it would be up to Amy and myself, whether you can join us or not. So, um, preferably. Because um, we do have people that, that do that, and, oh, and yeah. unfortunately, unfortunately, they wouldn't be on the list, the the name list for any of the private private events. Oh, so I see. Yeah, because you have to like go through the certain link, right, in order yeah, to get grouped in. So, if you're interested in looking at it in more detail, um, it's on my website is jpagetravel.com, and it's on the front page of the web, website. It's called um, Amy's High Tea at Sea. Yeah, and I'll post the link too after the fact on Facebook. Once we get done with this, I'll type yeah. it up. <laughs> so awesome. Can click so, it. Yeah. I guess I'm ready for random questions. All know. right. All right. I only have one. <laughs> I want to know, okay, aside from cruises, do you have um, a, like an interest, hobby, obsession? Is there something that's like uniquely your thing? Like I have some people that are secret, to... like video gamers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a video gamer. Um, used to be, but uh, but I do like to fish. I've done a lot of fishing. I used to fish almost 100 days a year. Wow, really? Um, so I haven't the last couple of years since I've been building my business, but um, I like being on the water in general and, and I like fishing. Um, and then on top of that, I was a professional chef for over 40 years. So I know a little bit about food, although <laughs> Linda does most of the cooking, but um, <laughs> I can find my way around the kitchen too. So. That's awesome. So when it comes to the fishing, is that like what kind of fishing? Are you like on a boat? Or are you on a dock? Mostly in a boat. Um, boat. I was fishing. I, I'm actually still the president of a local fishing club. Oh, okay, cool. So is that and, like lakes um, or where are you? Uh, it's like called Central Florida Offshore Anglers. Mm -hmm. The website is my CFOA. Um, and we do all kinds of um, obviously with a name like offshore anglers there's a lot of us that do offshore but that's changed in the last 10 years more and more people have gone to smaller boats so they do both inshore and offshore okay um so it's um it's kind of just a, a saltwater fishing club we don't do a lot of bass fishing we leave that to the guys with the sparkly boats um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's good. but we're, we're offshore and, and um more more offshore and some inshore indian river um, mosquito lagoon so, um, you know, I, I prefer offshore just because of the bird, but um, I'm happy on the water. It really doesn't matter. That's really cool. How long have you been fishing then? As far back as I can remember. Oh, okay. Remember it's just always been. Yeah. Old fishing with my family. That's super cool. Are you from Florida or where are you from? No, uh, my dad was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. So I've had over 40 addresses in my life. Oh, my God. And do you remember so, them all? <laughs> um, I used to be able to. <laughs> I counted them once, so I remembered them at that point. But um, I can tell you I lived in, I was born in New York. I went from there to Turkey, from Turkey to Mississippi, from Mississippi to Virginia, from Virginia to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, from Phoenix, Arizona to Detroit, Michigan, from Detroit back to Virginia from Virginia back to Phoenix, from Phoenix to Fort Lauderdale, from Fort Lauderdale to Boston, from Boston back to Phoenix and here. Oh my gosh, that's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. That's, really, that's awesome though, that you, so, <laughs> you remember it. <laughs> yeah, so I, that much I remember. The, the, the addresses, they're kind of faded away a little yeah. bit. I've been here, I've been in Central Florida since 95, so. Okay, okay, so this is like your home now. <laughs> I only had two addresses, so. Yeah. I rented great. for a year and bought a house, and it's, I'm still here now, so. Oh, nice. Well, that's yeah. good. Then. So, um, I was going to ask, so I like to ask, for people who are not fishermen, like the kind of fishing that you do, but are maybe interested in getting into it, what do you tell like a beginner that wants to like try? Join a club. That? honestly okay. join a club and, and get to know people that fish that like you know so you running a boat is expensive so every right. every boat owner first he's got to get to know you and want, want to spend eight hours in a boat with you uh, <laughs> yeah so they're not going to just invite you out you got to spend some effort and, and get to know them because mm -hmm. you don't want to get 
have two hundred dollars invested and get offshore and decide you don't like this person. So, because right. <laughs> so, you know, once you've invested that money, I'm not coming home until I'm done. You know, oh right, right. Wait it. So, um, join a club. Get to know people that fish. Okay. Um, be active in the club. Um, so there's plenty of clubs around. If you're interested in bass fishing, join a bass club. If you're mm -hmm. interested in offshore fishing, join an offshore fishing club. Um, but get to know people that fish. They're all looking for for buddies to, to go fishing with. Um, and so, do you buy the gear before you join the club? Or do you join the club and they tell to. you what you should um, buy? <laughs> most boat owners have enough gear to, to fish for okay. whatever you like to fish for. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have to, if you buy one or two rods, rods, that's fine. Um, but most boat owners have what they need to go fishing. Um, yeah, okay. So it, it's, it's a little bit, it is an, oh, it is kind of a networking kind of thing. You got to mm -hmm. get to know people before people open up. But right. um, once they open up and once you're in and start, they start seeing your, your, uh, you know, the person that they want to hang out with and then, you know, most people I know when I owned a boat, I had, you know, seven or eight people that I called every whenever I wanted to go fishing and whoever mm -hmm. said yes first was the crew for the weekend. Oh, okay. Okay. That's pretty fun. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't always the same four guys. It was usually two of us and then we filled in with whoever had the weekend yeah. off or the day off we were going. <laughs> That's really cool. I've yeah. uh, only done like a little, a tiny bit of bass fishing. Yeah. <laughs> like. I can't really claim anything. And I didn't catch it, but I was, yeah, I got to pose with it. I got to take a picture of it. So you posed with a bass. I pretend, yeah, yeah, I posed with a bass. That's all right. Yeah, and I was a total wimp because I was like, oh, no, it's hurting its mouth. <laughs> like the hook in the fish mouth. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, but that's, uh, it was fun, though. Like, I definitely like being out there. And that was just, like, you know, on a lake. But I like, um, yeah, it's peaceful. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's more about being on the water. Catching fish was always a bonus. Mm -hmm. I'm happiest on the water, whether it's right. on a cruise ship or on a pier or, in, you know, just being out on or close to the water is, right. is where I like to be anyway. So mm -hmm. I always looked at catching fish as a bonus. And, yeah, we had good days. We had bad days. It was still better than working. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But now you can work and be on a cruise ship. <laughs> yeah. So now I work and, I, and I still, when I, when I cruise, I still will, Linda and I will take a day and go fishing in a port. Mm -hmm. Oh, so okay. You know, someplace we haven't been, we'll, we'll hire a charter and, and go fishing while we're out cruising. So. Right. That's super cool. Yeah. Nice. Well, okay. Well, I think, you know, we think we covered everything. I got my question answered. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. It was interesting to hear, yeah, about your fishing hobby. So, I don't know, you got anything? Any any last words? <laughs> nothing nothing to, to say. Um, group Cruising is fun anyway, but cruising is really good in groups. And that's why I enjoy selling groups. Because um, there's always somebody to hang out with. There's somebody you know. You have something in common. So, it, groups is a, is a great way to cruise because there's, mm. there's just so many different you can connect with people in the group and hang out. Um, every night's not a new situation. You're sitting, you're having dinner together for, right. that night for the most part. So there's a lot of a, a social advantages to going in groups. Mm -hmm. So um, I do like to, to mention that part about groups. So um, other yeah, that's than that, a good we point. covered the ship, the island, the, the benefits. Um, we'll post the details later and right. please let us know your thoughts on if you if you want to join it's it's actually yeah. there um on the website to sign up today um if you sign up we're not going to charge you any money it just puts you on my mm -hmm. list of people that are interested in going um mm -hmm. the price that's posted on the website is is, is probably lower that's uh then then it's going to end up because we have to add a couple of um activities in but but mm -hmm. signing up just says you're interested and i'll, I'll keep in touch with you from there Okay, that's awesome. And I'm excited when you mentioned the benefits of going as a group because it made me think uh, of like summer camp. <laughs> like, I get excited for like group <laughs> activities, <laughs> whether it's like a common band or whatever. It's like when you're all together, it's like, yeah. Just yeah, that's fun. good because you yeah. find, you know, you find you all end up going to the same bar at night. You've all mm -hmm. end up going to dinner together. You know, so you see each other a lot on the cruise and you have right. somebody 
you know, somebody you feel like you're there with somebody. It's not just the two of you or the four of you from your family. So right. it, it changes the diamond dynamic. Right, right. And it's like you come, you know, you might come with someone, you know, or some friends, you know, but you also get to like mix up the friends because we're all in the same, you know, group. So yeah. it sounds like fun. Meet some new people, hang out with people, you know. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <Lots of> fun. <laughs> so um, very cool. OK, well, thank you so much, Jeff, for coming on. And thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I will I'll see you backstage, but um, I'll, you know, take us off live. <laughs> so. Thank you everyone for watching. Amy Mitchell with Houses of Windsor and Jeff Page. Oh, this way. Jeff Page with Cruise Planners. Oh, you had it right the first time. Did I? Oh, on my screen, it looks the other way. Okay. Well, we'll see how anyway, it looks in the recording. I'll it's just all good. like this. <laughs> okay, bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Amy. Thank you.